Today I will show you how to do Norlebening, which literally means needle binding in Norwegian. The stitch I will show you is called the Oslo stitch. It's named after a finding of a mitten in Oslo here in Norway, dated to the early medieval period. I'm going to show you how to make simple wrist warmers, which I think is a good place to start. To do needle binding you will need yarn. This should be pure wool and you'll understand why when we get to step 3 in a bit. You'll also need a needle such as this one and a cup of water. The scissors will only be needed at the very end so let's just put those out of the way. There are many ways to get started in needle binding and I will show you my preferred way which I think is the easiest. Put a loose string of yarn through your needle. And wrap the end twice around two of your fingers like this to create a double loop. Take the loops off your fingers. And take your needle through the back, under, and through the back again. Now the loops have become a number 8. When you have the number 8, hold it between your thumb and index finger. It doesn't really matter where the short end is, just put it away somewhere in the back. The working thread with a needle on it, however, should be lying over the needle and over your thumb. Now drag the thread all the way through. This will create a loop that tightens around your thumb. And the remaining thread on the back of your thumb will look a bit messy at first, but you need to find this loop back here. And now the stitching can begin. Thread the needle through the loop at the back of your thumb. Turn it up and then down under the thread on the back of your thumb. This will create a new loop around your thumb. Tighten it and then flip the old loop up behind your thumb. Keep going like this, put the needle through the loop at the back of your thumb, turn it up and down under the thread on the back of your thumb to make a new loop tighten around your thumb. Flip the old loop behind your thumb again and again like this. After a while you will see that the stitches have formed a nice braid-like chain. It looks a bit messy on one side and more tidy on the other side. When you've reached the desired length to go over your hand and wrist, you may want to add a few more stitches because the second row will be a bit tighter. Pull the end of the chain to tighten the end. Now make sure that your work is not twisted because it tends to curl up while you're working. Then hold it in a circle like this. Now we will connect it and start on the second row. The stitches from now on will be almost the same as before, but each, uh, each of them will begin by first going through the top of one loop from the first row as well. So from the front, through the top of your first loop. Then we continue like before.
Then pick up the loop of the next stitch from the first row, not this one, but the first one of these diagonal loops on the top. Continue like this again and again and new rows will be created as you go around in circles. After a while, you will see that you run out of yarn. When you are running out of yarn, you will have to merge the end with a new piece. This is why it's good to use wool and to tear the pieces off by hand, because then the ends will be a bit fluffy and easier to join. If you feel insecure about finding the right loops again after putting your work aside, you can put something in the place of your thumb, such as this, or you can just use your needle. So tear off a new piece of yarn and mess a bit with the ends that you're going to join. Add a little bit of water and merge the two ends together using friction like this. I like my wrist warmers to be quite long, so I usually do about 14 rows before adding the thumb hole. And the hole should be added in line with where you started at the bottom, so that the place you started and later stop will be sort of hidden in the back or on the inside of your wrist. To make the hole, we follow the same procedure as we did with the very first row. So instead of connecting it to other rows, you only use the loop at the back of your thumb. The number of stitches depend on the thickness of the yarn you're using and how tight you made the stitches, and also the size of your thumb. In my case, I do 8 stitches like this before connecting it again. Using 8 stitches, I connected to the ninth stitch. After making the hole for the thumb, you keep going as usual until you have 2 or 3 rows above the hole. You should stop in line with where you started at the bottom. And when you get there, take the work off your hand and tighten the loose thread. It should now be secure enough, but the end of the thread can be hidden on the inside like this. before you finally get out your scissors and cut the end.
Do the same with the place where you started. And that's the Oslo stitch. Now all you need to do is make a matching brother or sister for this one and your wrists should be warm all through winter.